Good morning. Today is Thursday, the 3rd of February. It's a feria in the fourth week of the church's year and the memorial of St. Blaise. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honour you with all your mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from First Book of Kings. As David's life drew to its close, he laid this charge on his son Solomon. I'm going the way of all the earth. Be strong and show yourself a man. Observe the injunctions of the Lord your God, following his ways and keeping his laws, his commandments, his customs and his decrees as it stands written in the law of Moses, that so, that so you may be successful in all you do and undertake, so that the Lord may fulfil the promise he made, if your sons are careful how they behave and walk loyally before me with all their heart and soul, you shall never lack for a man on the throne of Israel. So David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the citadel of David. David's reign over Israel lasted 40 years. He reigned in Hebron for seven years and in Jerusalem for 33. Solomon was seated on the throne of David and his sovereignty was securely established. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6. Jesus made a tour around the villages, teaching. Then he summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs, giving them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no haversack, no coppers for their purses. They were to wear sandals. But he added, do not take a spare tunic. And he said to them, if you enter a house anywhere, stay there until you leave the district. And if any place does not welcome you, and people refuse to listen to you, as you walk away, shake off the dust from under your feet as a sign to them. And so they set off to preach repentance. They cast out many devils and anointed many sick people with oil and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. First reading is about the finger of God in history. So often it doesn't seem so at the time, but in retrospect one can see how God's plan has worked. David, that impetuous, not always good person, very ambitious, sometimes very cruel, sometimes very greedy, has come to the end of their life. And the historians, some paint him as in a better light than others in, in the different aspects of the readings we hear. But this reading is strictly down the line of the Deuteron Deuteronomic author of uh, in the Old Testament. And it's all quite clear. If you do what the covenant requires, if you carry out God's commands, he will be with you and things will go right. But if you stray from the covenant, things will go wrong. And this is always borne out by the way they present history. Anything, every time Israel is conquered, it's because of unfaithfulness. And each time they return to the Lord, they find and gain strength again. It's an oversimplified message, but it's the message of the book of Deuteronomy and the author of Deuteronomy. David, remember, is always seen as the greatest of the Old Testament kings, and Jesus is the new David, so often picking up on those good things about David that uh, the New Testament authors want to say, showing that God's finger is with Jesus too. Yes, Jesus is God, but it all needs to be shown. And we see it in what Jesus does. He doesn't lead an army. All he's got is his twelve apostles. Very rough and ready men, every one of them. And he sends them out. And it's almost describing a test of faith. Go out without taking spare clothes, without taking any money with you, just trusting that you will be looked after by the good people when you preach the good news. And you will be able to give them faith, you'll be able to give them healing, 
and be able to cast out spirits. And it's a sign that the more simple we are about the gospel, trust in God, trust in Jesus, the more we will find that our faith helps us find peace. It won't necessarily bring us a fortune, it won't make everything go right. Like David, we'll still die of old age or sooner, we never know. But it's all part of God's plan. And when one's within the plan, within God's will, and that's why we pray in the Our Father in a moment, that we're doing things according to the will of God, then we know that nothing can go wrong, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Today is a memorial of St. Blaise, and traditionally, uh, not very often these days, but traditionally, two candles were placed against one's throat and one received a blessing. And St. Blaise is the patron saint of sore throats and get, being healed and kept free from sore throat problems. I think in this, as we come out of the virus, we, I think, which is a respiratory disease, we can certainly pray to St. Blaise for protection and that the world may back, settle back to normal and that people will not be threatened by this, in some cases, life-threatening life disease. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Hallowed be thy name. It is the Father's will that men and women should see him in the face of his beloved Son. Let us honour him as we say, Hallowed be your name. Christ greeted us with good news. May the world hear it through us and find hope. Hallowed be your name. We praise and thank you, Lord of heaven and earth. You are the hope and joy of all in every age. Hallowed be your name. May Christ's coming transform the church and renew its youth and vigour in the service of men and women. Hallowed be your name. We pray for Christians who suffer for their belief, sustain them in their hope. Hallowed be your name. We pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Grant us, Lord, a true knowledge of salvation, so that, freed from fear and from the power of our foes, we may serve you faithfully all the days of our life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Have a good day.